So I'll give a little bit of background about what Zukin has been doing for the past two years. So um, I set up a team. We, we knew we wanted to look at AI, and um, I set up a team two years ago to, um, to start to do this, and we're still building the team up, so the team is still, is still growing. My background is in electronics, and then I moved into software, but I have a PhD in, in artificial intelligence. So for 20 years or so, I've been working for Zukin. I've always been thinking, can I bring AI into the software somehow? As I said, two years ago, we set up this team um, and started looking at it, and so far we've focused on PCB design. So our goal really is to try to emulate as much of the thought process of a PCB um, design engineer as much as possible. So can we take away a lot of the, the sort of mundane work? Can we, can we do a lot of that with AI? And that's what we've been working on for, for say, two years now. And the first part of the software is just get into the sort of demo stage where we can demo it. So that's, that's what we've been doing for, for that length of time. So in Zukum, we've, we've, we've always had traditional um, you know, auto-routing tools. And for years, I've presented about the auto-router and you know, said what it can do and what it can't do. And typically, what happens is you show an auto-routing result to somebody, and they just say, well, that's, that's not how I would have done it or 95% of the work is done by the auto router, and the last 5% takes so long that actually they might have done it manually in the first place. It would have been just as quick. You know, I get that feedback quite a lot. Some people care, some people don't. So, you know, it just depends on the person. So what we're trying to do is create an automatic tool using AI that mimics the decision process that a, that a, a layout uh, engineer would, would um, go through that results in uh, routing patterns that are similar to, to hand-rooted, basically. So that's, what we're, that's the difference that we're, we're aiming for. And you know, so some of our initial tests, that means shorter track lengths, um, reduction in the number of wires, um, more aesthetically pleasing designs, which seems to be important to some people, um, you know, just easier to rework because the channels are better. You know, everything is just laid out in a better way than a, than a sort of a traditional auto router. In terms of complexity, the designs we've looked at are, uh, I guess, reasonably modern. We have some examples of DDR3, DDR4 technology, PCI Express, that kind of thing. So, uh, there's no point in trying to tackle problems that are, you know, old old technology, old designs. We are looking at sort of modern busing technologies and, and things like that. So um, that's certainly, certainly been a, a focus that we've, we've had. The point of it is that it'll learn from examples. So if you take um, um, you know, a number of known good designs and you feed those into the system, then it'll use that and extract as much information from those designs as possible and, and look at typical styles within that in that design and then extract that information out so that it can try to replicate that same style on a different design. So it, that's what it's trying to do. The other thing that we've been doing is um, taking feedback from user interactions with the software. So getting it to learn um, you know, from changes that the user does um, to remember those things so that next time it comes up with a design, uh, a, a sort of a design plan that is more similar to, to what the user has changed it to. I'm sort of underselling the complexity of the AI system there because there's a lot of work that's gone into, you know, if you think about a PCB design, just even just taking the design data, how do you extract from that final design what the intention of the, of the PCB designer was? So we've spent a lot of time um, trying to, to get that information out and we've, we've collaborated with um, some some academics, some local universities, who are really interested in human decision processes. So, how do they, you know, how do they make decisions about w doing something one way or doing something another way? Um, um, and you know, so there's a lot of complexity in the system itself. Actually, all the user sees is you take some design data and feed it into the system, and it extracts, you know, loads and loads of information out of that. It's a server client model, but the server can be local. So that can be local or it can be on the internet or it can be more remote than that. 
Um, so it's pretty flexible, the model, at the moment. Um, we haven't needed significant amounts of power, but obviously as the designs maybe increase in complexity and we build more complexity into the system, we will probably start looking at cloud computing or some other, some other methods. New problems are, um, as I said, extracting, extracting information from the data. If you take just a, even a relatively simple design, um, trying to work out, um, again, what the intention was of the designer. It, the, the problem isn't, of course, you can e easily replicate that same design, but that's not what we're trying to do. You want to extract information from that design, and then when you're given a, a different design, or maybe a similar technology design, you want to somehow apply those things you've learned from that first design and, and, and put them into the second design. So that's the difficult bit, making it general enough that it can, it can tackle you know, multiple different PCBs. And it's not just going to give you the same patterns over and over again. It's going to adapt the design for the different layout and you know, the different component placements and things like that. This whole thing is part of a wider process, which is from the schematic part. You know, so basically, uh, when the schematic is complete, um, the, the, the process we're tackling is from the initial board, so we start with a, uh, a just a board shape and some component um, fr you know, that have come from the schematic, and then placement of those components using AI, um, design planning, final routing, you know, right through to hopefully getting pretty close to production. That's the whole process we're trying to tackle. For the first stage, all we've concentrated on though is the, um, is the routing part of it, just to see if we can, if we can do that. What we're trying to do is release it in stages. So if you, if you take, um, you know, if we, if we can get something initially useful out of it um, in the routing part, then we'll do that. Then we'll move on to maybe placement or maybe something else, some, some you know, constraints or some other thing. Um, so we, we're going to release it in stages. The whole project, I don't know, five years maybe before, uh, before we get something that does that whole start to finish um, um, production line. This is mostly just within Zookin. Um, fortunately, there's enough expertise in Zookin to be able to do this. And as I said, I created this new team, and I've got a lot of doctorates in it. You know, so um, uh, people have come in. Um, you know, national competition winners and things like that. So we've we've managed to just be lucky and get a lot of talent in the new team. Um, that means that we can um, we can we can just tackle this internally. We've worked with um, universities, and we've gone to the universities and said. Things like, um, you know, how do we solve these particular problems? And actually, they've said, we don't know. This is completely new. So um, we are sort of breaking new ground and having to invent techniques as we're going along. Um, and we've, you know, we've followed, we follow all the latest research. We look at things that Google is doing. We look at things that other people are doing. And again, often, we have to go beyond the papers they've written to try to extend it to apply to our domain, because actually nobody's done this before in the PCB space, so it's, it's something completely new. And it's, it, you know, it's very interesting and very exciting work for us. Yeah, so in terms of getting you know, real PCB designer input, um, we certainly have done that internally, and we've talked to um, a few different customers about what we're doing. Um, and so far, you know, because until we get to the point where we can demo something, then obviously we'll get some real feedback and try to see how we can improve it. Um, at the moment, we're trying to get some of the basics sorted out, um, and we, we're pretty close. As I said, we're pretty close to getting something out that we can that we can show um, as to how it works. Um, but you know, there's a lot of a lot of knowledge of PCBs inside Zookin already. We have application engineers who have done PCB layout for years and years, and they. You know, they've given us a lot of feedback and we've demoed to them. Um, and again, getting the human element, getting the, you know, the, the thought process is, is one of the key things, is one of the key things for us. What we're trying to do is give the, the PCB designer the ability to control the software from a high level. So if you start with a, you know, if you start with a, say, let's start, as we are at the moment, start with a placed board and you've got some idea of placement. One of the tools that we've got um, that uses some of the AI techniques gives you a quality score for that placement. So it very quickly analyzes the board, works out where the relative paths are, not for individual tracks, but for collections of tracks, and will give you a score for how good it thinks that plan is. And that enables you to 
change the placement or do something else with the planning that um, you know you can use to improve that score. So the idea, is certainly initially, for the interaction this has with the PCB designer, is to use it as a planning tool. So the high speed aspect of it, um, you know, so if you think about um, uh, you know getting track lengths right or or you know sort of matching you know, differential pair halves or something like that that's handled by a different system so that's initially anyway that's handled by a more traditional way of doing it um, it's more about getting the AI to work out the plan of what's happening in the design um, and you know I've used the phrase before we're currently in the stage where we're doing human taught AI so that the, the PCB designer is teaching, helping the AI to learn how to do these things. Eventually, we'll get to the stage where we'll have human supervised AI, which is you know, probably the end goal, because I don't think we'll ever really, you know, we're not gonna completely replace the PCB engineer in all this, but hopefully what we can do is, do, is, is make it so that the PCB engineer doesn't have to worry about the sort of details and, and everything else that's going on in the design. They just worry about the plan. They, get the, they have the AI to assist them in doing the planning. I've seen that our competitors are doing similar things, but they are tackling different problems from us. We, we really are trying to build the human element into this, trying to extract the, the, the way the human does it. From the results we've seen, um, certainly internally, the reaction we've got from some of the PCB guys is Yes, it looks very impressive. When this becomes more mature, we'll, we'll really see you know, the, the, the proof of the pudding, as it were. So um, you know, as time goes on, hopefully um, we'll get more and more feedback. The thing we're really short of, actually, is data. Um, we can get plenty of opinions of, of, of designers, but getting data, obviously, there's an issue with IP. Um, you know, getting data out of companies is, is quite difficult. but it, as you know, probably from AI, what you really need is, is data in order to train these systems. We've got a version of it running in DesignForce, which is the, obviously the Zucum product. So, um, yeah, and you can just take um, the, the PCB straight away and run this, this tool in it. From initial tests, we've got things like, you know, shortened track lengths and um, less fires and, uh, you know, a, a neater looking design. Um, it's certainly easier to rework if you look at the results that we're getting. Um, you know, so I think there will be some, there's certainly going to be some benefit there, even initially, as, as time goes on and this system develops, you know, who knows what it'll, what it'll end up doing. Maybe it'll, it'll get more advanced features in there. I've been coming to PCB West for seven years, and as I said, since I've been coming here, even though my background was originally in electronics, you know, and I thought I had a pretty good understanding, um, there are so many experts here that you know do these advanced courses and, and really good quality of teaching um, that I have learned so much and I and I try to take that information back with me um, and every time I come I learn something new so um, and even though I thought thought maybe I was an expert before I clearly wasn't and um, you know hopefully I will continue to learn as I keep coming back here.